Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be um, doing a demonstration of an English country cottage garden um, from my photograph of this beautiful cottage here. Now I've simplified it quite a lot and I'm using my artistic license um, to cover the walls with roses. This painting is um, a slightly different style to my more usual style of demos, but it's something that I paint quite a bit for my own personal paintings, um, trying to get that sort of old fashioned feel. Um, and I can only show a small amount of the painting here because it took over an hour to paint. But if you're interested in this sort of process, then please pop over to my Patreon. Um, the link is in the description below and you'll find a really in-depth four-part tutorial with lots of tips and tricks and reference photographs um, available for you there. Right, let's um, get on to the painting and you can see that I've, I'm using a normal quarter imperial sheet of Milford cotton cold-pressed watercolour paper here and it's taped to my board but then I've taped off a square area because that's the composition that I decided to go for. And then I very loosely penciled in my windows, uh, my porch and the shape of where my flowers are going to go at, um, on the walls of the cottage and in the garden. Uh, my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees and that will help gravity to help me paint. I've just painted the walls with um, a very weak watery uh, mixture of raw sienna with a touch of ultramarine and I've used my three quarter inch synthetic flat brush um, to cut around the windows, um, the roses, the flowers and the porch um, so that I can keep them the white of the paper and get nice pure colours when I come to paint them in later. The first thing I'm going to do for the flowers in my English country garden is paint in the roses that are climbing over the walls of this beautiful cottage. And to do this, I've mixed up um, the same two colours that I use for my wall, but in different proportions. So it's ultramarine blue and raw sienna mixed up until I get this nice, quite dark, but sort of um, quite neutral green. And using my small calligraphy brush, or you can use any small brush with a point, a round or a mop, um, I'm sort of painting around uh, the little penciled in roses that you can see. I've just drawn in these little circular shapes here and there in my uh, rose climbing rose bush areas and I am negatively painting the roses by painting around the outside of them with my dark neutral green. You can see those little white gaps that I'm leaving and again those white gaps will allow me to have really vibrant colour for my flowers if I can paint my flower colours straight onto the unpainted paper. And then using the tip of the brush and a darker, richer mixture of the colour, I'm painting in my rose stems as they climb up the walls. This can take quite a while to get this right, but it can be a very effective technique for any kinds of foliage. Um, you can keep dropping in different shades and, or hues as you paint into the wet paint to give you lots of colour variation. And with this sort of painting method, you can also use glazes quite a lot. Now glazes are where you um, use a thin paint and paint over an area of bone dry paint. And because of the transparent nature of watercolour, um, the underlayer will show through the thin layer that you paint over. Um, the light will still shine through it and you'll get this lovely luminous quality to your painting and building up lots of very subtle hues and shades. Now that I've painted in the neutrals for my rose bushes, um, I'm using a brighter green, which is made up with ultramarine blue and cad yellow this time. And I'm going to start filling in this bush here right over on the left. Um, again, using that kind of 
um, scribbly brush stroke that allows a little bit of the white of the paper to show here and there and that um, stops that area from looking bland. It just gives it a little bit of life, a little bit of interest but it also means I could put flowers in there later if I wanted to. And I'm going to move on with this lovely bright green um, into the garden area and start to um, suggest some of the flowers um, that are growing down in the grass um, in front of the cottage. It's a very loose informal garden as most English country gardens are or cottage gardens and so I'm just going to keep it really fresh, really simple and just use brush strokes and colour to try to layer up these clumps of flowers and to sort of add interest. At the moment it all looks a little bit dull but as soon as I start to paint the actual flowers themselves then hopefully the whole painting will come together. I'm trying to get a sort of very nostalgic, old-fashioned, almost romantic feel to this painting. At the moment in my sort of um, personal um, projects, I'm researching Victorian and Edwardian uh, watercolour artists and their methods and techniques. So I'm trying to bring a little bit of that to this painting here to have that kind of sort of really old-fashioned, as I say, nostalgic, romantic feel. I'm keeping everything very simple here, even though it's sort of taking a while to paint the detail, it's still loose and simple. As you can see, I'm painting in my windows just using a single brush stroke of ultramarine blue with a bit of Payne's grey um, and negatively painting the window frames by just not painting them. So it's very, very simple. and I can paint all of the windows like that. And it's very effective, but as I say, very simple. A very planned painting like this can make a, a real change from a loose impressionistic painting. Um, even though this is still impressionistic, it does take some planning and some thought so that you can work out um, how to build up the layers um, so that it works, starting and working from light to dark. I'm putting a little bit of colour onto my porch now. Um, we'll get that to stand out a bit more by painting shadows on the walls around the porch. But I think that nice light uh, raw sienna wash on the porch uh, will do for now. So now I'm continuing to use the cat yellow um, near the, the foreground of the painting just to wash in um, a few more sort of mounds and clumps of these beautiful flowers. Um, leaving white gaps here and there in some places for introducing some nice bright flowers a bit later when I come to paint them. And here you can see I've started to build up some shadows around the base of some of the flowers and bushes and around the porch. And now it has to dry completely and then I can continue with the finishing details. The first thing is the door. So I've mixed up a nice sort of bright but deep green um, for the door from, again, ultramarine blue and cat yellow, um, making sure it's a nice, rich, highly pigmented colour that um, goes well with the greens that I've used in my foliage, but that's very different from it as it's sort of representing sort of a man-made painted door. And then I'm going to go back to my ultramarine and Payne's grey and darken up some of the window panes here and there with a light glaze of the same colour and because of the transparent nature of watercolour um, that will give me a nice dark tone where I've glazed over the window panes. And I've mixed that same paint with a bit more water and I'm now glazing over the walls uh, next to the porch and below the rose bushes because they are in a bit of shadow and you can see that little light glaze you can see the warm sienna shining through the glaze but it gives it a bit more shadow it makes the porch stand out and the wall above the roses stand out in the light a lot more 
And now the bit that I've been waiting for, painting the flowers. Um, it's not winter here. The reason I'm wearing gloves is because they're compression gloves and they really help to keep my arthritis at bay when it's flaring up. So I just thought I'd mention why I'm wearing gloves. So now onto the roses. This is alizarin crimson. I'm going to alternate between alizarin crimson for some of the roses and you can see dropping it into the unpainted areas that I've left. Um, the roses are really vibrant, really stand out beautifully, um, contrasting against the green. And I shall alternate between this lovely, rich alizarin crimson and permanent orange. So here I'm going to put in the permanent orange roses um, towards the side and I'll put a few more permanent orange roses um, on the right side and on the uh, bush in the garden as well. And I think you can see that these tiny dabs of colour, even though they're just really small marks, they are standing out so well and starting to bring this scene together. I think the payoff in a scene like this is huge. Um, it's worth putting in the preparation work and sort of building up and building up the layers. Um, and then the final touches and accents of colour um, really pop against the neutrals and the mid-tones. And you can, of course, use um, any fine brush for this, a detail brush or maybe a, a small round brush with a fine point. I'm using my calligraphy brush again. It's my go-to brush for most details. I'm varying up the shapes and the sizes of my flowers, but sticking to those three main colours. Um, alizarin crimson, um, permanent orange, and I'm using a bit of rose madder as well. So I'm hoping those large pink flowers there done with the rose madder look a bit like sort of large um, hydrangea florets in that large bush there. And then continuing on and dropping in some sort of um, random little red bursts of colour in the foreground, but not too much because I want the foreground to lead the eye um, to the rest of the garden and of course to the climbing roses. Um, around the cottage. I've looked at my painting and I've decided that I need to have a few more climbing roses um, around the porch just to bring the thing together again a little bit. So I'm painting in my climbing rose stems and then I'll take a bit of my alizarin crimson and paint in a few roses just over the door and I think that would just give me that lovely finishing touch as will a few well-placed shadows here using the tips of my flat brush on the top of the door, the side of the door and underneath and around the step. And um, I can just uh, make sure that that porch roof is defined a little bit more. I'm gonna do the same just running that down the window frames and across the top of the window frames. This is just my mixture of Payne's Grey and Ultramarine and quite a dry mixture and it's only a little bit on the tips of the brush so my marks are very faint and very simple and just hopefully bringing the painting together but without adding too much detail. So that's a bit of raw sienna for the letterbox and a little bit of the dark mixture, a little dot there just for the keyhole. So we really are on the final details now. So I'm just going to mix up burnt umber, Payne's grey and a bit of ultramarine and darken up the front of the path a little bit, putting in the dark colour, then washing it out with a bit of water, spreading it across the path uh, just to get that little bit of darkness and intensity and sort of like a framing device across the bottom of the painting.
and I think I'm almost done and I'm going to remove the tape and have a look at the painting and just double check a few things. I'm not sure whether I've got my rose bushes dark enough. So here we are um, with the tape removed and I'm really happy with it, but I do think I need to darken up the roses. So I'm just going to put a light glaze of my dark mixture, my green made from ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber and raw sienna and I'm going to work it in leaving some of the existing colour showing through some little gaps uh, but just work it through to deepen up the shadow and as I deepen up the shadow you can see the porch is standing out a lot more and I think it just brings the tonal values together across the whole painting um, in a little bit more harmony. So if you think you might be interested in the four part in depth tutorial and all the extras, please follow the link below to my Patreon page. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll be notified whenever I post a new tutorial. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.